one of the Buddhist concepts that's hardest for Westerners, is merit. Probably because the translation is bad. The Pali word is bunya. And it's the opposite of evil, the opposite of bad, so it should be good. So think of it as you're doing good, and then you want the goodness to spread around. So you dedicate it to others. And you see someone else doing good, and you rejoice in it. This is what the word anamodana means. You see it's a good thing, and you give your encouragement, you give your approval. And this way the goodness grows. Because when you see someone else doing good and you approve of it, it inclines you to want to do more of it yourself. And when you've done it and you stop to think about the goodness you've done, how happy you are that you did it, you realize you've got a special form of happiness here. The happiness of sensual pleasures is always tinged with regret. Either regret over the fact that the pleasure is gone, or when you start thinking about some of the unskillful things you did to get the pleasure or that you did based on the pleasure, more case for regret. But the goodness that comes from being generous, being virtuous, meditating. You think about doing it and it makes you happy. You do it and it makes you happy. After it's done, it makes you happy. You're glad you've got this in your past and you want to get more of it in your future. So even though it sounds like spiritual materialism, people trying to amass goodness, you're going to ask yourself, what are you amassing as you go through life? People amass things and they have to throw them away. Or they get evicted themselves, in other words, they die. And they can't take any of those things with them. With the goodness that you've done, it becomes a quality of your mind. Someone asked a John Munn once, if virtue is something separate from the mind, and he said, how can it be separate from the mind? It's one and the same thing. If virtue is separate from the mind, somebody could steal your virtues. But it's impossible. Your virtue is yours. Your generosity is yours. The goodwill you've developed through your meditation, that's yours as well. And that goes with you wherever you go. So it's good all around, which is why the Buddha encouraged it. The fact that there's happiness that comes from goodness. That satisfies two parts of the mind. The part of the mind that doesn't want to harm anybody. It's had enough experience causing harm and realizing that it all comes back at you. So you want to be harmless. And at the same time, you want to be happy. The Buddha is never saying, don't work for your own happiness, work only for the happiness of others. He says, work for the happiness of both. It's like that time when I asked John Fuhr when I was translating a John Lee, should I translate to get the letter or the deeper meaning? And he said, both. Which, of course, made it more difficult to translate. It was more of a challenge, how to be right in line with the words that John Lee used and at the same time be in line with his meaning. I learned a lot that way. Well, it's the same way when you're trying to be happy and trying to be harmless at the same time. It raises the bar. But you find that you're capable of meeting that challenge, and the happiness that comes is a much more satisfying happiness. So maybe you can put away the word merit and use the word good instead. You're doing goodness. And think of it as a genuine nourishment for the mind and the heart, because we're training both the heart and the mind. If insight were just a matter of understanding and constancy, stress, and not self, that would be one thing. But it also has to do with how those three perceptions affect the heart and affect the heart's desires. Train you to be a more mature person in both in heart and in mind, looking for happiness that is not subject to inconstancy, stress, and not self. And the practice of goodness gets you started in that way.